Welcome back to the Sirius system, where this ship is still running out of fuel. Uh, we've completed research into the Sirius, and I've put together a possible missile design. It has a range of 15.41, and only has about a 50% probability of hitting our missile, but if you fire two per enemy missile, and enemy missiles might be slower than ours, but you might stand a good chance of getting a good first screening in. So the first thing we need to build are these right here. So we need all the specs for these. We've got engine sizes right here. So we'll make sure and have the actual description of what each thing does at the top. So first thing we need is an anti or is a missile engine. These are going to be very unique styles of missiles because they're only going to have one damage and they're going to have fairly short range. They're actually sh longer range than my uh, bomber missiles now that I think about it, which could be changed, but will that help anything? It will, but only slightly, and I'd rather have longer range. Honestly, I don't care if they're longer range than my bomber missiles, they deal less damage. So the bomber missiles are still better, objectively. But these are going to be impressive little things. So if we highlight the row we're using. We need a size 0.46 missile. Right there, we create it. So we'll give 1.472 EP. We then go into our actual research tab, and I had put some people on more compact electronic, but we'll remove them to get the people out to research this. Now we did lose our best power propulsion person, and I have a person working on uh, fuel consumption right now, just because we need that more than anything else. I'm going to go ahead and queue up, queue up someone on missiles and kinetic weapons, just to kind of get that pumped out pretty quickly. Really, you'd think that a missiles and kinetic weapons person would be good at creating a missile engine. Honestly. But I guess not. Uh, we're going to go a... Five days at a time, not 30 day increment. I did put two SeaWiz systems on the destroyers. Alright, we've completed research into our quad turrets. If we also set up sensors and fire control, we need to create our point defense uh, beam fire control. We need four times speed, electric hardening level two, ship based system, no restrictions. Range. This gives us a 40,000 kilometer range. What's the range on our lasers? I have a feeling it's a lot more than I'm actually going to be able to use. Uh, refresh tech. What's the range on this quad? Well, zero. Thanks. Um. Is there a way to... well there is a way to check. We can make a laser. 12 centimeter far ultraviolet range of 200,000 kilometers. Um, we could actually get that full range. 4 times tracking speed. I think we could. 4 times... we could get really really close, but we'd be using 8 whole spaces on a fire control. Which I'm actually not entirely against. Because we've got a huge ship to work with here. But yeah, we're going to need to be making missile fire control. And we need to probably make a new generation of active sensors. I'm just upgrading everything, aren't I? Alright, let's start with active sensors. Since that's the easiest thing to do designs for. And then we create size 4 ones. I don't know why size 4, but I guess it's fine. Yeah, so we have enough uh, size to see, or we have enough range to just get to the outer edge of our missile range. Or of our sensor range, our missiles have enough range for that. So we've created our Gen 2 sensor text that we need to research. So we also need a missile fire control for size 1 target, or for resolution 1. Uh, we need 15 million, so that'll do, but we could go up to, yeah, let's keep it as small as possible. 
against missiles actually we need a longer range so size four I'm happy with five million kilometer range yeah that that works that works fine versus a size six missile or smaller five million because the actual what is the actual range of our search sensors against the oh just over just under 2 million, 1.7 million. Uh, so we can actually back this down quite a bit. 1.790. Yeah, that's all we can do. That's the best. So we'll create that. And therefore, we can start planning also the missile launchers. Now, these will be size 1 missile launchers, rate of fire of 10 seconds. That's impressive. We could reduce the size and double the reload to 15 seconds. That's actually a really good trade off. We could double the amount of launches we get. I'm liking this idea. So it's a size 1, reload rate 5. We use half size launchers to 5 times reload rate, which really only equates to 3 times reload rate because of what the actual reload rate was. And every 30 seconds should be enough to deal with any amount of volleys. And this is, this is going to give a lot of options. So we'll create that. Um, we also need a magazine. Just designing everything now. Except I think I won't design the magazine immediately. Yeah, let's wait until we have more stuff onto the ship before we do the magazine. So let's go ahead and take our next best sensors and fire control person, or do we wait? We wait five days. And ta-da, they're now doing missile ECM. Actually, I should just queue up all the techs. Oh, well, let's go bottom to top. Queue top. Queue top. Queue top. Queue top. Queue top. Queue top. And queue top. And then we'll add all of the extra labs onto this one, because it's the higher priority right now. Actually, we need to remove ten or a few labs because we can actually make the missiles now. So this is where the actual missile design will come in. We've got our small engine. We need a .1667, yeah, a .042, and .3313. Size one anti-missile missile. Pretty good hit rates on everything. We will create a series of S1. AMMs. All AMMs will be size 1 because we don't want anything larger. That's a waste. We have these now. We can change the size S1 AMM Mark 1. Change the name, I mean. Create that. It'll go into S1 AMMs. And we then go over to here. Uh, research. We need missiles kinetic weapons, we need to set someone on these two techs, which are pretty easy, so we'll give this guy some experience and maybe he'll increase the amount of people he can manage, which would be great, but we can't deal with a five person being on best missile and kinetic weapons. 30 days, we have completed all of the techs we just queued up. Yeah, that was quick. All of the missile techs, that is. So we now have the basic stuff we're adding onto here. If we add in our new missile fire control, Rain, er, resolution 1, pretty good, and we add in our missile launchers yet. Uh, let's add in all of our quad turrets first. So this is giving us a decent amount of firepower there, size 1 missile launcher percent reduction. These are tiny things. Let's get like 10 for now. So that's leaving us still quite a bit. We need a beam fire control. Which you could use the size 8, I guess. Yeah, it would fit. Sort of just running through possible ideas here. Because we have a lot of space left to work with. I like having three quad turrets. That seems like enough firepower that we can get downrange. And I'm not really interested in getting any more. Plus, we'd have to add extra stellarators. And we have perfect stellarator ratio right now. 
We're going to need magazines, and a new generation of magazines will be good, because then we can have better storage of our missiles. We only need size 1 missiles, so we need to decide how many volleys we need to be able to fire. Uh, let's get... Let's get everything else planned out before we do much more. So we've got our missile launchers, we need beam fire control, we need to put on our active search sensors, our new active search sensors, which will be down a ways. It's anything marked with 50%, which is none of the ones we haven't done right now. Yeah, that's great. Uh, shields. Six. We need heavy shielding, because these are getting in close to do their job. Uh, 30 days? 30 days. Oh, we've got act an active research lab, that's right. So we're doing a lot of the active search sensor stuff. We'll add more research labs to here. Or should we remove them and start doing the beam fire control? Let's make the full size beam fire control as a preliminary possibility. 4 times size, 4 times range, 4 times size, 4 times tracking speed, electronic hardening. That's everything we create. And now we go into research, we find sensors and fire control. That's a pretty big thing to have. Yeah, we're just gonna queue it. And we're gonna move it up higher so that after all the search sensors are done, it will do that. Which means I'm oh small craft. So that for like fighters? Oh, I'm queuing that up. We can get a lot out of that. I mean, we can get more out of the regular countermeasure version. Which is why we're probably going to push down that track a bit more. Because getting fighters that are much harder to hit would be great. So I usually run into this position where I have a tiny bit of extra space with nothing to do on it. Uh, anything else we need in here? No, doesn't look like it. So we just add our research labs. It'll all be done pretty quickly. 21st of May, 4 hour of 2076 is the thing there. Big caveat, gonna take a lot longer for that one. Uh, I think we'll be fine with the Recon Task Force 3. Started work on fire control, which means now we can go in here, refresh tech, take our active search sensors. We need a resolution 1, 50%. And I'm going to clean that up by going here and obsoluting all the 70% ones. Oh, do we have ones that want to have? Let's stretch it out that way. There we go, that makes more sense. So yeah, we're going to obsolete all the 70% ones. And I realize that that's going to, you know, make the... Uh, make some of our frigates have obsolete sensors, but... I don't really care all that much. It's not like it's a big deal that they're obsolete in text, it just means they won't show up anymore. So we've got all six of our uh, of our active search sensors, or our active search sensor types, and then refresh tech. We've got the active search sensor we need on these, right? Is that the right size? Oh, that's the real question here. Did I grab the right size of one? I did not. Because these are not supposed to be independently operating. They've got the ability to operate independently, but their first priority is just getting as many weapons in here as possible, rather than just spam it, rather than being independent sensor platforms. I'll double check that that's actually what I did with my... Uh, what are they? The Dragon Classes? Uh, if we see the Dragon class, component summary, we've got active search sensor resolution 1, yeah, size 1, yeah, we just used size 1. Do we have a resolution 20 on there? I guess we could stick one on, that makes sense, I guess, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that. So yeah, we're fitting a lot of stuff onto these ships. I'm so glad I made destroyers larger because I feel more like these are actual destroyers than the previous designs that I've been using, where it felt like the destroyers were just a bit pathetic. This, I can understand why these would be standard military vessels. You get a size 1 resolution 20 right there. Maximum range of 17. You can see fast attack craft at a decent range. 
but the resolution one is really going to show us where missiles are if we lose our primary defense or our primary sensor hubs. Got all of our. We gotta get the missile fire control still. That's the current issue. And I think Task Force 3 has gotten through the jump point. Has it gotten back to Earth? Or is it just waiting at the jump point? I think it's back at Earth. Yeah, it's back at Earth. So it's refueled now, which means if we look at this, we can go Naval Organization, First Recon Task Force, Branch Plus Sub, and there we go, we have the First Recon Task Force. So they're ready for a new mission, and I'm saying Jump Point 4. That'll be a good location to go to. Uh, let's take a look at our shipyards real quick. How is the expansion going? It'll be done in 2076, so by the time we actually get that, then we'll have things done there. Uh, construction production, we could reduce that. Once all of the things there are done, we could reduce that. Uh, let's go ahead and grab class design. Refresh techs, we can then go to point, or fire controls. Add that in, we've got beam fire control now. Am I happy with 10 size 1 missile launchers? I think so. Seems about right. Got the right stuff there in terms of... Oh, we need engineering spaces. That's something to stick in before we get too busy with everything else. Should have just multiplied by 10 here. Uh, 4.29 years, average incident. Failure rate of 1.1, .1, average failure rate of 77%, so it'll fail once a year. We could reduce that a bit by adding 5 more. And that Oh, that doesn't leave us much. So we're basically down to providing magazines now. That's all we can give now. Because there's not really space for anything more. But I'm happy with how much we've gotten onto this one ship. I mean... Six Delta Shields, two engines, four quad point defense turrets, ten missile launchers for size one missiles, two SEWIS systems, and the fire controls for all that stuff. So how much space do we actually have left? We've got about 15, uh, yeah, we've got 15 whole spaces. So if we go in here, magazines, Let's create pretty high hits to kill ones. Or should we? Let's just go with 5. So capacity 15 on a size 1. That's 15 missiles. 225 total. Or no, 225? It is 225, isn't it? Yeah, 225 total missiles, which will be 22 and a half full volleys, but I doubt we'll use full volleys. We increase the size, we get more out of it. We get higher, f yeah, it's because the efficiency has been lowered. Um, let's go with the size five. Or should we use the size three? Forty-eight. That's a ninety-six. Should we get slightly more? Oh, hundred. Oh, that's so ra nice and round of a number, but. Go with the five. Missiles kinetics. Pretty cheap. We'll remove some from electronic countermeasures just to get this out. Uh, still a five lab person. So we got that as our limitation right now. 30 days. And recon, recon Task Force has found Alpha Centauri. I've had bad luck with Alpha Centauri in the past, so but I don't think I'll have bad luck today. Or maybe. So here the only problem is the atmosphere is not breathable and the temperature is a bit too cold. We'd make an alright planet when we get to it. Uh, let's get the Recon Task Force. And let's create a separate force out of the scout frigates. Branch plus sub, scout frigate task force. What's the range on our scout frigates? The range on a scout frigate, which is a beholder class, is two, no, not 2.3 million, uh, 96.6 billion. 
how far to Alpha Centauri B. Yeah, we're fine. We'll send them to B... which one is it? 3, I think it was? B2. Alright, send the scout frigates to B2. And we're going to start doing proper survey strategies here. So we're also going to go... We're going to say... Branch plus sub of gravitational survey. We're then going to give them the special order of survey near survey location. They're just going to work together so it goes through things faster. And the first recon task force, you are then tasked with, and eventually we'll have like a flagship there that will hold it down, and we'll have geological survey task groups separately named. But their job is to survey the nearest planet or moon. So Scout Forget, you are moving to... Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Great. We... Delete. Now we go to Recon Task Force and we set this up properly. So, French Plus Sub, your job is to go to Alpha Centauri B2. And your actives should be on. Uh, back to Recon Task Force, we go to Gravitational Survey, we need French Plus Sub. Your job is Survey Nearest Survey Location. And then first recon task force, you just survey the nearest planet or moon. That should do the trick. And so we'll start looking at jump points as well in system, because Alpha Centauri is usually alright. So there's no one here. Alright. Uh, let's now have the scout frigates go in system. So to A1. All of these are pretty close actually, so it should be easy enough to get all the surveying done. 30 more days. Yeah, haven't found anything. So we're going to send these scout frigates to the jump point. And we're just going to move to and stay there for a while. Scout frigate task force completed orders. Magazine complete. There we go. Refresh tech of the drow design view. And now we add magazines. And this is, the, I think, the last major step in the design here. One. That's too much because we added five there we go one two three we can't put a third in well we could we're removing an engineering space and replacing it with a smaller one an engineering space small uh tiny tiny too much in tiny's did we add a fuel storage tiny? Yeah, so we're sort of just trying to fill out what's left. And I think we've done that. So here is the Drow class destroyer escort. And this is the big ship that we're going to start using for the design of the rest of what we've got to build. Which is the rest of the frigate classes. So the destroyer escort is entirely dedicated to point defense. It can fire 10 anti-missile missiles every 30 seconds. It has how many total? If we go in here, it's just at a thousand though, we can only fit 259, so it's just under 26 volleys of that. So it can take on just about any amount of missiles that are sent at it. Should they get through that missile defense then, they have uh, it's four quad ultraviolet point defense lasers. And then should they get through that, two SeaWiz systems. So lots of power there. I'm liking this, so we're going to use this. But now we need to design the rest of the variants, and the next variant will be the anti-ship one. And this is just the Null class destroyer. Oh, there's a courier class. No, not early warning craft. Destroyer. So the difference here is we're not going to have the anti-missile missiles. And since this is actually the best fire control we can get, we're going to keep using it. We're going to keep the SeaWiz, we don't need the magazines. We don't need the Resolution 1 sensor. But we will add a Resolution 100 size 1 sensor. And that way we get extra viewing range. These ships are going to be great. We're going to add extra shields, because this is going to get in really close to the enemies. And if we, our shields are, go down, we're in trouble. So there we go. 
and we're going to replace our turrets with new turrets. We need less... Well, actually, we're going to change our fire control. Yeah, because we don't need that much fire tracking, that much tracking speed. We're going to stick a 10,000 on a quad turret using 25 centimeter lasers. <laughs> and we're going to give it a bit of armor, I think. I'll have to see what exactly we end up doing here, because this is taking up a lot more space than I might expect. Uh, so we're only looking at our tracking speed of 10,000, so let's go back into design. Let's take a beam fire control and tell it to have a fire control speed rating of 2 times speed and 4 times range. Yeah, because we need all the range we can get. We only have life more because how much range can our turret get if we actually look at it? 800,000. We don't have the beam fire control range for that at all. We can get somewhere close. So 160,000 kilometers, it's sort of as if it's engagement and building. I think it can get 320,000 ideally. So that's not half bad. Uh, electronic hardening, of course. And now we go into research. Sensors and fire control. We need to get this this research. So we're going to queue that up after the next level of electronic countermeasures. And that will be done pretty quickly. That's finishing in March, and then that's going to be even cheaper. Just look at the amount of research points we're getting. 40,000, wow. Uh, yeah, we'll add more research lots to here. See? 46,000 a year. That's spectacular. We can just blitz through all of our sensors and fire control research and be way ahead on that. But I don't think I will, because that seems a bit wasteful on what we could be doing here. Uh, let's go ahead and while we're at it, add some extra countermeasures research for sensors and fire control. Cue that, and then we'll queue up some missile ECM. We then go here, refresh tech, remove this fire control, and instead go for the one which is uh, where is it? 10,000 H50. We now have about a hundred whole spaces left for design purposes. And one thing we definitely need is to figure out our stellarator quantity for these new turrets. So, right now they have a power requirement of 64, but they only recharge 16 each. So here we could fit three turrets, but we don't have enough space for three turrets. So we can fit two quad turrets with a turret armor thickness of two, or if we drop the armor thickness to one or even zero, I don't want to do zero, because we can't even fit three on with that. So let's say two, which increases the hits to kill from 16. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, is there anything else we could get on these turrets? Well, let's get the quad turrets in and see if you have any extra space to put on maybe a twin or a single. Because we managed to really fill out the previous ones quite well. And if we can just get these quads working right... Energy weapons. These are fairly expensive. They're a bit out of this guy's quick research range. And by a bit, I mean quite a lot. Um, we'll go until we get another research, and the point will come out next year. Oh wow, that's a really close in jump point. Um, that could be useful. Keep going. So we're finding jump points in Alpha Centauri. And we're getting small craft electronic counter countermeasures now. Uh, regular small craft electronic counter countermeasures are complete. Counter countermeasures is a bit difficult to say, but I'm sure that's not entirely a surprise. Compact electronic countermeasures can be queued up. And we keep going. Because all we're waiting for is that one turret tech, which will make it, make it possible for us to start putting together the last bits and pieces for the 
destroyers. Um, do, we don't want to get an extra level of countermeasures, do we? Yeah, because the next level of countermeasures is expensive, and we might as well. We're looking at we're in 2075. Let's queue up research rate, followed by ship or shipyard modification rate. I'm still looking about a year away from being able to do more work on getting that destroyer shipyard to the right size. Alright, research on the turret is complete. So now for your fresh tech, and go down to weapons, you can get a quad 25 centimeter turret. You can get only one of them. Which is understandable. However, if we remove some stellarators... Yeah, we can only get one of them. But we could queue up a triple as well. Which would mean we'd require less in terms of power income. We have 16 already required. If we get 12 more, that's 28, which means we can remove another one of those. Uh, that'll take up 34 whole spaces, which we have quite easily. So let's create the triple and begin researching that, which should be fairly cheap if I remember correctly. Uh, and it... No, no, remove, cancel that. That's gonna take ages. Energy weapons. Uh, 25 centimeter on our energy weapon person, which is, he's only getting, she's only getting percentage stuff. Ugh. There's more to do, mate. There's way more to do. Best sensors fire control person. We're just gonna put on what we can and then go straight into our construction production because we need research rate, we need shipyard operations. How exactly do you research shipyard operations? How do you research a lot of these things? I mean, some of the research seems a bit odd. Just because you know exactly what you're gonna research? It just seems weird. Uh, Team on Earth has completed missile ECM, which means it's doing research right now. And we're just waiting on that turret tech, which will be a bit further away. I didn't even check when it would get finished. When will the turrets be done? November. So, two months, really. And one more month. There we go. Triple turret. This is going to be a pretty powerful ship. I'm just going to say that. Now at a triple 25 centimeter turret. And we're looking at just a tiny bit more hull space available. Now, in order to fill out that extra hull space, we have many options. I don't think an extra turret is an option. It's just too large. Specifically, we have about eight hull spaces to fill. We could add some more range which I'm reluctant to do because it's a destroyer still, and we don't want to do that. We could add some more shields, and I'm leaning towards that. We could increase the independent sensor range, but it's already got maximum range for being able to fire in its sensor range anyways. We could just add more engineering spaces and increase its maintenance life and make it less likely to fail, and, and if it does, we have more maintenance supplies lying around to repair it, which is seeming very, very appealing. Not a jump driver, there's not enough space for that, and we'd need to make a whole new jump drive, which would be very expensive. More seawas? Nah, we don't have space for that, do we? Well, we have space for one. There's all sorts of options here. Uh, let's give it some ECM and some ECCM. And then another level of shields. And then fill out the rest with engineering spaces. It's just slightly too large. Could we fill out the very last bit with a fuel storage or two? There we go. Happy with it. We have a bit extra range, but not enough to be noticeable. 29 billion kilometers, it's really just that we got, like, 
ten thousand more fuel than the other one. Uh, than the escorts that is. Range is good. Power is incredible. It can deal. How much damage can it do? Uh, how much damage does the 25 centimeter laser do? Anyways, I don't even know. I can't see the damage anywhere. What's RM? RM is not on the list of glossary of terms. So we can build it in the same shipyard as the drow, so we may be able to build them all in one location still. Uh, let's see. Rate of fire, fire. Rate of fire. What in the world is RM? Range is a thousand kilometers on that. Wow. Well, we can just check what our laser damage is by going to rating, right? Yeah, rating is laser damage 16. One of these lasers hits you, 16 damage. These destroyers are heavy weapons platforms and nothing else. Now they are extremely reliant on the destroyer tenders we're going to make and tankers and all that because they don't really have much in terms of range, they've got a low operating period, but they're going to be operating in our system for now, we're not going to send them on long range missions I don't think. And yeah, so that seems good. What else are we going to need? We also need to make the destroyer leader. And this is going to be the easiest one. The, the missile destroyer is going to be the largest difference. So we're just going to do a destroyer leader for now. No, we're going to make this one a destroyer still. We're going to copy. Auto rename. Never heard of that. It's like a Draco Lich. Is there such a thing as, like, a Dragon Lich? That's interesting. Well, that's an odd name for a capital ship, or for a flagship. So this will have a flag bridge. I don't know if the flag bridge is necessary, but I'll have it anyways. It will have extra sensors. Specifically, it'll take out all of these and put in all of these size 4 sensors. There we go. And in exchange for that, we remove a triple. And can we fit a twin into essentially 20 spaces? Ooh, there, see, there's so much little design stuff in here. No, but we could fit a single. With some room to spare for other things. Which I'm rather liking the idea of. It, it would give us five lasers on our leader. Oh, these ships are going to be incredible. Uh, they're probably pathetic and people are probably going to be like, Whoa, your ship is on so bad. But, you know, I'm having fun with this. This is spectacular fun. And we give that to Ashley Steele there. And so we're still going to need to design our size 10 missiles, and that'll probably be a task uh, that'll do... Oh. Why don't we start that now? If I can go here, we have a goal of a size 10 missile. Can we get 25 damage? Yes, and we can still get really good hit rates, but we need 0.3 to increase the range. Really, we should probably go on a 0.5 range. 0.5 minimum fuel. 72 million. Alright, research completed into this single turret. These things. So, do we need that much power being made anymore? No. We have enough space then for something else. And I'm thinking we give it extra Suez since it's a more valuable target. Can we fit in one more tiny fuel storage? Yes, we can. There we go, the Dracolich class. Can the Null build the Dracolich as well? No. Oh, so we're running into problems now with building all of our ships at one location. It's not going to happen. But the Dracolich is our destroyer leader. It will serve as the defensive, uh, it will serve as our sensor platform, the uh, which one is it? The Null will be our main combat destroyer. 
seven 16 damage lasers with a rate of fire of 20 seconds. That's just incredibly powerful, and I think every sink will die. Oh, there's the damage, right? It's a damage falloff, I always forget that. I uh, don't remember what the falloff exactly means. Uh, I feel like it'll probably show exactly what it is. I'm trying to figure out what this is exactly saying. Can you unlock the design then? I guess I guess I've been copying it and changing it stupidly. And yeah, okay, that's what's happening. Whoops. So you can just unlock the design and make some changes. So we've got just about everything here. For the destroyer, we've got everything for the destroyer leader on the Dracolich. So let's take the next big design leak, which is to copy this design, auto rename, the ghoul class missile destroyer. And these are perhaps going to be our most unique little ships. So right now we're operating on fairly small ones, on fairly small ships and all that. Don't need a flag bridge. Uh, let's remove the tiny and small stuff for now because we may or may not need it. And remove that ECM, and remove an extra shield layer. Or two more. Because we don't expect to get too close with these. What we definitely need is a size 10 missile launcher. And I don't think we're going to be doing a reduced range. Or a reduced size. Because what we can... we, we could... I believe I'm using size tents. We could do a 0.75, which is fire every two minutes, which is kind of the baseline I set for my missile fire rate is two minutes. Every two minutes get a missile off. I guess that would help quite a bit with the size of missile launchers we're working with here. Yeah, let's do it. So we're having a reduced fire a reduced size missile launcher. We go into research, missiles, kinetic weapons, we need to get the missile launcher. Now, things we actually need in the design. This seems like a pretty good missile there. Although it's not the best at hitting our own ships. And I'm not sure about the range. Let's see if we can increase that range. Minimal damage to how much it can hit, uh, how much it can, or how well it can hit us. It's still pretty good. And we're looking at 85.52 million kilometers, which if we go here, that's pretty substantial. I mean, how far is our current sensor ranges? That is a scout frigate's resolution 20. It can go to the edge of a scout frigate's resolution 20. But really, what is the range on our top sensors right now? So let's go to the Dracolich. So many classes of ships I've got now. Uh, this has a fire control. Oh, no, we're looking at sensor ranges. There we go. Range for resolution 100. Range of 156.8. So we won't be able to fire at the very far reaches of our range. Which is alright. We can work with it anyway. It's cool. The Ghoul class needs a sensor. We'll give it a resolution 100, size 1, it has a maximum range of 39 million kilometers, which is the minimum range we need on our missiles. We also don't want to give them ASM AMMs. Oh, no. Component, er, ordnance. Remove all. We also need to do that to the, not the Drow, the Dracolich. There we go. So those don't even have capacity, so might as well not tell them to load stuff. The ghoul class will not use AMMs. We'll use different stuff. We'll use more powerful stuff, really. Let's go 30 days at a time. Get a bit further into this stuff. New shipping line. Our second shipping line. Our shipping line's not really doing that much. 
which is weird. Usually they do a whole lot more. Maybe it's because I haven't expanded the civilian economy that much. And we've got our size 10 missile launcher. So, we're going to go class design, refresh tech, find the size 10 missile launcher. And I'm thinking a lot of missiles. Six seems about right. And we need to throw on magazines, which we've basically got the best magazines we can get for this job. So each of those will hold eight, so we've got eight volleys in there. Uh, one more volley, two more volleys, we've got ten volleys. We've still got some space for the fire control. So let's design our fire control. We're really just trying to narrow down all the little bits and details we need to vary. I'm getting general stuff down first, so let's get fire control resolution 100, because this is for large targets. This thing is going to just destroy anything it hits. Now we can get an extra level of, of electronic hardening, which I will do just because it's worth it. Okay, so we can hit up to 117 million kilometers. Our current design that we're looking at is 85 million, which this would be a bit larger than we need, but it would allow us to use new missiles as we move up. So I think I'm going to use this, create, go in research, missiles, kinetic weapons, no, we need a sensors fire control person. This guy's busy for another year or two, or two. Ugh. Throw that on, yeah. And once you're done, don't feel up the small craft electronic countermeasures. We'll have him do that once everything else is done in his queue, or her. I have a lot of female scientists and I keep using him because I'm doing a generalized immediate thing. Wow. Um, what else are we going to need? We need the missile design. So our missiles, we need to design the engines for them, but we can wait to actually start the research on them until after we've completed everything else necessary here. And let's minimize most things here including the missile destroyer and this turret, so we don't even need the turret menu up anymore. We're looking at a 3.29 MSP missile. This thing is going to absolutely shred opponents. Like, nothing is going to remain of anyone this missile hits. 25 damage, that's more than our lasers do. It'll specifically go through 5 layers of armor, as shown here. The only way you could get better is by using larger squared numbers, but 25 will just bite right through it. Um, and not to mention the shock damage it'll give. Pretty good speed, it's slower than most of our missiles, but that's fine. I didn't expect an incredible speed on these large missiles. They're supposed to be slower and just getting close and kill. Uh, they couldn't hit themselves very well, but you know, if we wanted to use them in an anti-missile capacity, we could. It'd be really long-range anti-missile missiles, and way too powerful. Maybe it would like work in the area around it, like damage. That'd be cool, but I don't think there's a function for that. And yeah, that's what we're looking at there. 10.528 EP magnetoplasma drive. I'm just sticking on magnetoplasma for a while. Usually, I would have moved on to internal fusion, but I'm liking these magnetoplasma stuff. Um, and we'll go until. Oh, our fuel consumption research is just around the corner. And we've completed a gravitational survey in the Alpha Centauri system. Two jump points there. So we've done it. That was pretty quick, and we're still doing the geological survey. We've completed fuel consumption research, so we're going to say gravitational survey task group. You're going to go to the sole jump point, move two. And once you're done with that, let me know. And then we're going to... Queue up the research and power and propulsion for the missile engine. These engines, these missiles are going to be fantastic. They're just going to destroy everything. Keep going. Gravitational survey task group is done 
with what it's doing. We need to change its orders now so it stops complaining to me. It will then, we will absorb the, or we'll have the scout frigates absorb. So task groups, I could have just gone through the other way, but yeah. Absorb, and they will stay there waiting for the geological survey to be complete. How is the geological survey looking in this system now? Uh, Duranium, Neutronium, Corbomite, eh. Duranium, Corbomite, Tritanium, or Cassium. Mm, there's some stuff there to look at. Nothing there. Corundium at low availability. Very little of anything. Sorium. Doing, uh, let's click on minerals there so we only see the minerals. Um, uranium, neutronium, uranium, neutronium, tritanium, boronide, mercassium, and galacite all at good availability. Uranium and tritanium. So there's no corundium in Alpha Centauri. Uh, there's really nothing worth. There's lots of uranium, and we'll end up going here. We'll set up a colony probably on some planet or other. Uh, but there's no planets in system that are worth. The only reason I'd set up a colony out here it would be to have population. And is there any reason to actually have population from just just having population? I don't think so. We're gonna absorb, and we're gonna go through the soul jump point, not through the unexplored one, and we're gonna go back to Earth where we will refuel, resupply, and begin overhaul. Uh, how's our Shipyard looking November, and it'll be ready for all that. Uh, how's the en the engine? We've just started research here, right? Yeah, it's well, no, it's just around the corner. You know. Missile engine is complete now. I just predicted that because it was going to happen. Uh, while we have the fire control, let's go ahead and refresh tech and add it before I forget about it. So there we go, missile fire control. And now what we need to provide is the missiles. We can probably throw on more missile launchers with this design. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be great. Now the problem with adding more missiles is we need more uh, magazines, and I can't promise that that'll all fit. Uh, so yeah, we'll stick with this for now. Uh, in terms of missile design, we need to actually design missiles, yeah. We've got our engine, so we go missile design, which is already a thing that's up apparently, but we'll close it so that we get the refreshing, the refreshed menu, not the refreshing menu, that'd be a bit weird. You want a 4.1667 strength, or, or size warhead, we need a 0. 0.6057 fuel capacity engine, or fuel capacity missile, and a 1.9 376, that's a size 10 anti-ship missile. Yeah, maybe I should, oh yeah, it's supposed to be. Alright, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's, let's create a missile series. <laughs> I'm not putting armor on it, and that might be a mistake. Well, perhaps it'd be better to have a tiny bit of armor, but this tiny bit of range we get out of it is maybe more worth it. If we reduce this to 0.55 and put a 0 0.05 hits to kill, do we get a hits to kill? How even does hits to kill work on missiles? I don't know. I'm not willing to mess with it right now. So for our first generation of missiles, we're just going to go 0 0.60, size 10, no armor, first generation of large ASMs, so we create a, a large ASMs series. This will be the size 10. Now we could actually come up with names for these things, and I just I don't know what to call them. Mark 1. There we go. We create that. It's an expensive project, but these missiles will basically kill anything they hit. We're going to go ahead and set up someone to start researching that. Uh, we are looking at 
missiles, kinetic weapons. We search these missiles. Uh, I'd like someone who can do more, like that guy. He can do more labs, and he'll probably be better anyways than this guy with 5% more who just can't learn how to use more labs. I don't understand that. I mean, surely you'd be able to... Surely you'd be able to have someone do the bonus and someone do the number of labs. I guess that'd be a bit overpowered. And you'd have someone who's really good at labs and someone who's really good at bonuses and you'd have them pair up. And then everything would be done almost instantly. Which I guess is cheap. Yeah, I can understand why it's not in there. Uh, we're going to set up the industry to start producing anti missile missiles. Because I realize we're going to need them. So missiles, we go to size 1 AMMs. How many do we want? Let's go for a thousand. Uh, our fuel production is alright, but I'd like to start setting up fuel platforms, which will be the goal for next time. We will get fuel platforms set up to make sure that we are secure enough in the long term in our fuel situation, have a sorium supply. We've still got enough, but sorium is important in its raw form for use as uh, jump drives, which is why I don't want to throw all my sorium into fuel. Yeah, we've queued up our size 1 AMMs now, and it seemed pretty good. Uh, how much more can we fit onto this ship? That's the next question, and once we finish that, we will be satisfied with what we've got and just move on and finish this episode up. Size 10 missile launcher. Could we fit another magazine? Yes, we could. Seven missile launchers. Can we fit a tenth magazine? No. So we've got nine magazines, seven missile launchers, we've got four more space, three more space, really. So let's try and fit on some more engineering spaces. Oh, that's perfect. We're sticking with that. The Ghoul class missile destroyer. Let's check its. Yeah, we need a completely separate shipyard for basically every single uh, ship that we're building here. That's what's happening here. We need different shipyards all the time. Can you actually set up the sh ships to name themselves after... That'd be interesting, but... I feel like that's a bit more than I'd really like to bother with. Because then we're going to run out of... Famous horses of the U.S. Civil War. Um, how many name systems do you have in here? I haven't looked at this part of the game at all. Okay, so this would actually name each ship separately based on ships of a specific uh, of a specific list, and it, I guess these lists are longer than the other one. Swords. That might actually, hmm. I might consider that for capital ships, having them be named upon a certain uh, naming system, and have each ship have a separate name, so carriers and battleships and such. And not light carriers, like large carriers, anything cruiser sized, or, or any carriers cruiser sized or above, and any battleship sized ships, give them a specific naming scheme. I kind of like that idea. I'll probably do that. And we'll decide, I'll decide what exactly it'll be. But yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, I'm getting carried away. I'm talking a lot, and I've got to talk less because this is... I've reached the end of this episode by quite a large margin. Uh, so, yeah, seven... There's going to be four of these in a fleet. That's a lot of missiles every two minutes. Plus, add that with the missile frigates. This is missile spam at its finest, and we're going to win because of it. So yeah, great ships. Not so great shipyard situation. We need more shipyards. I'll get started on that. Alright, uh, see you next time, where we will probably start building those fleets. Which is weird. Destroyers already, and we don't even have internal fusion.